While Nigerians head to the polls on March the 28th, the nation's independent and national electoral commission says it's ready to conduct the presidential parliamentary elections after the vote was delayed by six weeks over security concerns. For the voters, especially the young, their only hope is that this time around, whoever wins will act on their promises. Awoloa is a taxi town finding passengers for the motorized rickshaws that throng the streets of Lagos. He left school at the age of 10 and now earns just a few dollars a day. As presidential elections loom, he would like to see his country offer a better future for young people. There is scarcity of work on the road. People are applying academic, you see, you see a old mastering degree holder that is riding bike on the road. We have a scarcity of economy, scarcity of everything in Nigeria. At a hairdressing salon in a working class area of the city, Perpetua is also concerned about the situation. Only 20 years old, she's already tired of the promises made at election time. What matters for her is security and education. Our Chibo girls is, are not yet back, so I don't know what government are still doing about that. As I can hear from their campaign, they said um, if we can vote for Buhari, that they will give us um, they will bring back the cheapest girls. So we don't know what they're doing about that now. So if they can work on it, especially in education level also, will give us a sound education, make um, social amenities for us, we can go for them. Nigeria might well be Africa's leading economy and the continent's biggest oil producer, but more than 35% of people under age 25 are underemployed. That devastating figure has created a mistrust of politicians who are regularly embroiled in corruption scandals. What some people are saying, are arguing, is that if we can vote out the ruling government this time around, politicians, will, especially since it's an incumbent, politicians will begin to understand that the answer to us. So there's, there's that divergence of, of, of opinions. Some believe that there's no point, while some believe that we should be patient and keep trying until we get it right. In less than two weeks, Nigeria's young voters will have to choose their next president. The incumbent, good like Jonathan, is up against a former military ruler, Muhammadu Buhari. Both men have based their campaign around the young in a country where 43% of the population is under 15. Now for further discussion on the upcoming presidential election, I'm joined by Emmanuel Ogebe, an international human rights lawyer and expert in bilateral U.S.-Nigerian relations. Also with us today, Kadir Hassan, a consultant and analyst on Nigerian affairs. Gentlemen, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. So the election is uh, very close and uh, many people are looking at the two important men right now. Uh, uh, the incumbent, President uh, Jonathan, and of course the opposition, uh, General Buhari. If I may begin with you, uh, uh, Hassan. First, why do you think Nigerians would want to vote for General Buhari, who was formerly a military ruler in Nigeria? Well, um, I think the situation in the country says it all. This scorecard is out. Um, Nigeria, in the last five, six years had more oil revenues than ever in its history, but unemployment rates are up, uh, insecurity is so high, the Naira has crashed. The economy is not working for the population, mm -hmm. most of the people. Yeah. And I think um, the ruling party has been there for 16 years, and uh, Nigerians want to try something new. <laughs> and you know, Emmanuel, a few weeks ago, uh, there were projections that uh, the incumbent president, uh, good like Jonathan, was uh, looking like he's going to win, at least uh, perhaps have a narrow uh, victory. But uh, there were some studies conducted by uh, some group called uh, EuroAsia Group. It says that actually it looks like the tide is turning against uh, Jonathan, that actually Buhari stands a good chance. Do you believe that? Well, actually, I, I disagree with both uh, assessments because... A few weeks ago, I was on ground in Nigeria, and the impression then was that President Goodluck would likely lose or that there would be a, a constitutional tie because they would not have been able to conduct elections in the Northeast and they wouldn't meet the constitutional thre threshold mm -hmm. of votes. So now that a military has liberated uh, two of the three states in the Northeast that were taken by terrorists, there's a greater propensity 
that elections will be held in all of those regions. And the public is beginning to feel, if this man could change in six weeks to fight the terrorists, maybe we should give him a chance. So I think that I disagree with those uh, <laughs> So, Hassan, uh, you know, basing it actually on what has been achieved lately, and that's what the president, uh, Gulak, is saying, that, you know, look, we have secured, we have literally secured in the north and northeast. Isn't that evidence that he can do much more once well, he gets an next mandate? Well, the thing mandate? is, um, is uh, an indictment on the president because he himself, he said he underestimated the situation. Mm -hmm. This uh, problem did not start... Um, in six weeks' time, it has been there, and uh, everybody knew that uh, what needs to be done in terms of mm -hmm. what the military needs to do and, uh, and the challenges before it. But he, they, they he just literally it. took his eye off the ball yeah. until when the elections clearly showed that he's going to lose, mm -hmm. then he went back to work. And you know, uh, Emmanuel, I, that's what is the argument. Uh, I think some are saying. Why didn't he do what he has done in the last three weeks or so? Mm -hmm. uh, the unemployment, as we saw in, in my report earlier, is still high. Or many of the young people are severely underemployed. Mm -hmm. What is there for Mr. Jonathan to show for his five years and actually more than five years yes. in power? I mean, very candidly, any president who has done four or five years and is going up for re-election and is having a hard time it means that he did something wrong that made it difficult for him to be elected. But when you compare that with General Buhari, who was in power for 20 months he, under a military dictatorship, and even his own military felt he was too bad that they kicked him out. If you compare those two, it's difficult to say that we have uh, a good option. But the fact of the matter is this president is a minority. This is the first time we're having a minority in that office. So clearly... Uh, he doesn't have as much of a strong base as he would have had if he was from a majority tribe. And so it's taking him a lot of time to survive even the uh, you know, minority tribal uh, ethnic battles. And I think that this turnaround uh, might encourage some people that there's hope. I don't, I don't fully endorse what he has done before, but I think it, it's indicative that his learning is a lesson. Now, uh, looking back, you know, going back to Buhari's time, think, yes. First of all, I think the issue is not that Pres uh, President Jonathan is a minority. He won the 2011 election, okay, by the goodwill of Nigerians from across the geopolitical zones. He won from everywhere. He, he got support from the north, from the southwest, from everywhere. Yes. And he won by a margin of more than 10 million votes because people thought he would deliver. So the issue of minority tribes, religion, it's not the issue. It's the issue is that Jonathan failed Nigerians in terms of security, in terms of economy, in terms of unemployment of the youth. These three things mm -hmm. are what Nigerians are looking at. Now, and, uh, to kind of uh, take them off the table and say because he's minority, he cannot build his support base. No. Well, I, now, I, I, what's I, your, what's your, what's your argument against that? I disagree with that because yeah. the bottom line is when he won in 2011, in 12 states, in the 12 Sharia states of the north, they went on rampage and killed uh, hundreds of people, destroyed over 700 churches. How is that a sign of support? And, and actually, Hassan, there are some who have accused Buhari of being an extremist. He, has, uh, he himself said that he would restore that's, that's, stricter that's not Sharia issue. laws. He in won in Adamawa State. He won in Benue. He won in Nasarawa. Mm -hmm. They are all How about if he based uh, his uh, future on the in, past? Even in Katsina, he won almost 30 to 40 percent of the votes in yeah. Katsina, Buhari's hometown. Yeah. What I'm saying is that Jonathan in 2011 had the support of Nigerians strongly, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of hope that at all time high in the history of OPEC. But okay, can so history... He, he did not deliver. Can, can, and uh, that's the problem. You don't want to judge him as a minority. You yeah. want to judge, judge him on him his record. As a Nigerian. On his record. I, yes. And, and uh, uh, Emmanuel, yes. what, what do you say? I mean, the fact is that actually he got the support of many Nigerians he, in the past. He got the support of many Nigerians. And he's a minority president the same way that President Barack of Obama is a minority president. But he had the support and goodwill of a lot of black people, but did a lot of white people. But he squandered the goodwill. Did he squander the, the, the goodwill? I feel there's no doubt that yeah. he did squander the goodwill. Yes. I, I, there's no the doubt point. about yeah. it. The fact so that, of the does matter, he deserve then to be rewarded? Well, here's the, the fact <laughs> of the matter. The fact of the matter is this, that there's nothing I have seen that Buhari has done from when he left power over 30 years ago till now uh, in that makes seconds, him has he justified uh, to replace him. <laughs> Definitely. As a pr he headed 
they are trying to run Shoah P. Yeah, they yeah. cannot, the PDP. Yeah. The Shoah P thing was something similar to PTF, yeah. which Buhari ran effectively. It has been under investigation by the PTF government by, for okay. 16 years, no indictment. You know what? We'll continue. we'll continue this discussion. Thank Thanks you. a lot, uh, gentlemen, uh, for, for your perspectives Thank today. Uh, 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 well, Mr. Manuel Ogebe is an international human rights lawyer and also an expert in bilateral U.S. and Nigerian relations. And Kadir Hassan is an analyst of Nigerian issues. And we thank you very much for joining us today.